So what is Schilling test really? It's just a test that uh, it's used for investigation to figure out what is causing vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, and uh, it has different stages. At every stage, it'll rule out a disease or it'll rule in a disease. Okay, the first stage is to you want to give the patient radio labeled B12. Okay. Plus, well, and this is oral, okay? So you have to give it to the patient in a, with a fluid or with food uh, so they can digest it, okay? Plus, you give them an injection, okay? So intramuscular, uh, unlabeled B12. Okay. So the reason for this is uh, once the patient takes the B12, the radio labeled B12 orally, it's going to go into the uh, digestive system, right? And it's going to get metabolized and then uh, hopefully absorbed. And the reason we give them the intramuscular B12 is because this intramuscular B12, it's going to go to the liver of the patient and it's going to saturate all the B12 receptors in the liver. Now once saturated, the radio labeled B12, if it's observed through the GI system, and it, uh, once it travels to the liver, uh, it will not be able to bind to these receptors because they're all fully saturated. So what's going to happen is it's going to get excreted into the urine. Okay. So uh, what you do it's it's that you wait 24 hours to 48 hours. And then you measure the patient's urine for uh, radio labeled B12. Okay, so you can get two different uh, results. You can either have increase, and I put RL for radio labeled B12, or you can have decrease radio labeled B12. Now, what, are these, what does this mean? So if you have increased radio-labeled B12, it's, it tells you that uh, the radio-labeled B12 was ingested and it was uh, metabolized and it was absorbed from your GI. So there's no pathologic events that is inhibiting its, uh, its absorption from your GI and it was normally observed. And since there's no pathologic reasons, this indicates uh, dietary deficiency okay and then if it's decreased we realize that there's something else behind this picture okay there should be a pathologic event uh, that it's not allowing the radio labeled B12 to get absorbed from your GI system okay so uh, this would be absorption problem Now once you do this step and you let's say you get decrease in radio labeled B12. So now you want to see what is causing this uh, uh, this result. So the next step is to stage two. This was stage one. It's to again give the patient radio labeled B12. Now this time you want to give them intrinsic factor. So plus intrinsic factor. Now you wait for 24 hours and you measure the urine. Now again, two things can happen here. Okay. You can have again increase in radio labeled. Or you can have decrease radio labeled B12 in the urine. So what does it mean if it's increased? It, it means that once you gave the intrinsic factor, 
the B12, the radio label B12 was able to get observed in, uh, from your GI system. Okay? So that means that there was an intrinsic factor deficiency in the body. And the most common cause for that is pernicious anemia. Okay? So this is your diagnosis. Pernicious anemia which is an autoimmune disease that uh, attacks your parietal cells in the body of your uh, stomach. And if it's now, if it's decreased or none, this means that uh, there is no dietary deficiency, because we already ruled that out. And there is no intrinsic factor deficiency okay so now you move to the third stage and now this time you give again radio label B12 but this time you will give antibiotics So why give it antibiotics? Well, maybe the reason of uh, malabsorption of B12 is due to overgrowth of bacteria in your GI system. So this antibiotic will get rid of those bacteria, and if it's due to the bacteria overgrowth, once you measure your urine, you will see increase in radio labeled B12. If you do see that, your diagnosis will be bacterial overgrowth. And if it's low again, if your radio labeled B12 is low in the urine or it's absent, then you conclude that there is no dietary. deficiency, there's no intrinsic factor uh, deficiency, and there is no uh, bacterial overgrowth. So, you still have to do another test, which is the last test you do. The last test will be your stage four. Now you would want to give, again, radio labeled B12. Now this time you want to give pancreatic enzymes. Now the reason we give uh, pancreatic enzymes, I've, I've made another video for vitamin B12 metabolism and absorption where I explain exactly uh, where every one of these come in play and how B12 gets uh, separated from your food and gets uh, binded to intrinsic factor and how, and how it gets absorbed. I suggest you watch that video because that will make everything in here even more simpler. But a quick review, uh, once you take a food that contains vitamin B12, for instance uh, meat, it contains B12. Once the meat goes inside your stomach, your uh, stomach has these cells called chief cells, which uh, they secrete pepsinogen. Now, pepsinogen gets activated and becomes pepsin, which will uh, start metabolizing, uh, help metabolizing your food. And it results in separation of B12 from the food or the meat. Once it's separated, it's a free vitamin B12. And at the same time, your salivary glands, they secrete these proteins called R protein, which in, this, uh, in the stomach, it will bind to that free B12. And at the same time, your parietal cells uh, in your stomach, in the body of your stomach, they secrete intrinsic factor. And once uh, all this stuff is there, they get secreted into the duodenum. Now in the duodenum, your pancreas, 
is going to secrete of enzymes such as lipases and proteases and stuff like that. Now the protease will get rid of, let me just write it down. Uh, so inside the inside duodenum we have B12 attached to R protein. Okay, and uh, uh, what what happens is that your pancreas secretes uh, protease, which is an enzyme that uh, cleaves proteins. It'll get rid of this R protein. Now B12 again becomes free. Correct? Now once it's free, now it can bind to intrinsic factor. And then it can get observed. So if you don't have pancreatic enzymes, you will not be able to get rid of this R protein. Okay? And if you cannot get rid of this R protein, your B12 never gets free and it will never bind to the intrinsic factor. So it will not be observed. So this is the reason you give pancreatic enzymes. Okay? So now, since it's the last stage, it should fix the problem and it'll, it should increase your radio labeled vitamin B12. And this will indicate that the problem was pancreatic insufficiency. For example, uh, chronic pancreatitis.